The first time that I heard another band calling themselves death metal, the word was getting around and, and it really felt like it was spreading like wildfire. And there were several people that had really re revamped their entire sound to be more heavy and faster like us. I saw music taking a different direction at that time because, you know, again, we had all the hair bands and all this stuff, you know, and the bands that I was into were more, more of a polished studio type, you know, King Diamond, Merciful Fate, very um, polished. So again, that raw brutality was really cool. And it's like you can really see it taking a new shape, you know. Yeah, eventually in time, you know, death metal came around. You know, I got, I jumped into it. You know, a lot of other people jumped into it. You know, bands came out like Immolation. But the first one, historically that comes to mind would be Chuck Shoulder from Death. And he wrote and we corresponded. He was really, he was really turned on about what we were doing. He was really the first person that was really into the whole death metal thing. And he knew it, he saw it for what it was, which was something completely different. It was new. And so he actually moved down to Antioch. We had uh, Crystal Mahoney was our fan club president who lived out in Antioch. And he'd sit around and Chuck would show, check out this riff, check out this riff, check out this riff. And he really looked up to me. And of course, you know, who wouldn't love that as a, you know, 16, 17 year old kid. We would sit there and just jam and talk and he'd ask me questions, almost like an interview. You know, he was really wanted to know everything about what I was doing. Uh, the band, the first band I was in, it was kind of death metal, but we, we looked at Possessed Seven Churches. You know, my guitar player was just all into it and he showed it to me and I was like, well, you know, because me, I, I like a little bit more cleaner vocals. I didn't really like the Creepy Monster. And when he, I heard Jeff, it was just like, dude, it's butter to my ears. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm gonna sing like you, and you know, he even asked, is that okay? You know, because, and I'm like, well, of course that's okay. You know, it's a free world. And back then, he wasn't the mighty Chuck. He was just some, some kid that was hanging around and looked up to me. So I didn't, I recognized him as talented, but I didn't put a lot of foresight into thinking like, this guy's really gonna take off. Which is crazy because it was pretty obvious how many riffs he had and how amazing it was. I should have snapped him up as a guitarist if I would have been thinking. I kind of skipped my, you know, when I was a kid, skipped the whole thrash scene, you know, I just went from like heavy metal straight to death metal, you know, like, like Sepultura and on. So, you know, like a lot of bands will cover uh, possessed songs and, you know, they'll be really cool and stuff like that. So it wasn't until like I was like, you know, my late teens that I actually got into like possessed. I remember one time we, um, I don't know if I should say this, but I took a mirror and I, I made all our initials out of math, right? And uh, I gave it to Chuck, you know, and uh, a big CS. I had a JB and I did mine and I did his CS and he did his. And then we sat there and talked and he looks up and he goes, fuck man, I'm on eight hits of acid. And I was like, what? Like, oh my God. And that's when it really hit me. This dude's totally amazing. I would be like curled up in the corner sucking my thumb like, you know, I would have been freaked out. I was freaked out anyway. But the way that he could just, he was so focused and he was so purely into it. And I, I loved that, you know, he was the first person I really recognized as a death metal artist. Because like I say, he asked permission. He developed that relationship, you know, and, and until then, I think I would have been kind of offended. I mean, if somebody else called themselves death metal because that was supposed to be possessing, you know? And, and, you know, which is stupid now that I think about it, but back then, you know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. I remember him showing the, the first tracks which would become Scream Buddy Gore, and he, he came up and he was like, he was like all excited, and he was like, Jeff, Jeff, and he puts it on, and he's like, listen, I sound just like you, man. And that's when it really hit me that there would be more than one death metal band. It was good just to have somebody else who could relate with me and relate with the fact that the media was trying to put their foot on our neck and not recognize death metal or possessed. And I remember it, I can picture it now as we're talking, we were right there in the dining room at Crystal's house. And um, unfortunately, shortly after that, you know, I, had, uh, I was shot and, uh, you know, I don't know, years later, I hear that death is like the biggest thing since sliced bread and that made me happy. So it made me happy that death metal didn't die with possessed but lived on almost solely through Chuck and Death.